Hi, it's Ashley from Sweet Dreams Bake Shop and welcome back to my channel where I make a lot of cake and cookie decorating tutorials as well as give a lot of baking business tips. So as per usual, stay till the end of this video so I can give you my general quote for this cake. Today I'm using my Italian meringue buttercream. It's one of my favorite buttercreams to use. I will say that if you haven't decorated a lot of cakes or worked with a lot of meringue based buttercreams, it can be a little bit tricky. It's very, very nice and smooth. I like the flavor of it because it's not too sweet, but if you're used to working with American buttercream, this might be a little bit trickier for you. So what I'm doing is I'm just making sure that I have all of the gaps filled in because the better that you do this part, the more easy it's going to be for you to actually coat it with the final coat of buttercream. So I'm just taking all of that little excess bit and I'm making sure to swipe that forward and take it away. Now you can also do a method where you just leave it as is that way and then you take your exacto knife after everything is really nice and chilled and you cut it off. I'm just going to do it this way. I've always liked this method better but if you do want that super super clean cut look you can do it that exacto knife way. Over the past couple years of making these tutorials and watching lots of different tutorials, I've noted that there are just so many ways to do the same thing. So really find what works for you. This works well for me. I'm now adding on a bunch of different kind of gradients of green. I'm taking the same buttercream, starting off with just about a little drop of Chef Master in leaf green, I believe. And then I'm adding on a little swipe and then I'm going ahead and I'm adding a little bit more food coloring to just make Make this gradient here. You'll notice that I work from the top and then go all the way down so then that way my frosting is being layered outwards in that manner because I want it to be thicker on the bottom. If you want it to be thicker in the midsection and then get smaller and smaller then obviously you're going to do it the other way around. Now if you do want a little bit more control with how you're applying this, I recommend a piping bag. I wanted a little bit more of an abstract look so I went with my spatula and you'll notice that I am torching it every now and again. What this does is it heats the metal and then I get a a nice kind of smooth finish on the outside and I keep that kind of jagged look which I think in my mind was just supposed to be like grass and hills. So there I have two different types of tips. So I had my tipless piping bag which I just cut a V into so I could create those leaves and then I also had my actual leaf tip which I created the leaves with. My apologies on the missing footage of me actually piping those. I was making a short and I think I turned off my actual camera. So I think I do end up showing you how to pipe those leaves later on. But basically you're just squeezing it and then pulling off when you want to end the leaf. And of course you stop squeezing once you pull off. Now we're moving along to our fondant work and I'm just taking some satin ice fondant in white and I'm creating these kind of stumps here and these are going to be like our little toadstools. I want this to have a little bit of a whimsical woodland element so that's why I'm going with this nice punchy red. And in order to be able to work with my fondant where it's not sticking to my hands and it's not getting all over the place and it's not too dry and cracking, I like to add just a little bit of shortening. And I kind of just take a little finger full of shortening and mush it around in that ball of fondant that I'm using. And if it feels nice and malleable but not too, too soft and it's still holding its shape really nicely, I know I've added enough. If I'm still seeing cracking happening, that means I need to add just a little bit more. Now because this is a primarily buttercream coated cake and it's not fondant, I'm not using my steamer a whole lot during this portion. I'm actually using a paintbrush with just a little bit of water on it to attach all of these pieces. I do dye my fondant quite a bit. I generally buy a huge large bucket of the white satin ice fondant and then I dye it little by little as I see fit. But there are two colors that I generally just purchase already dyed because it's easier and that is red and black. I can get this red color especially when I use fondust but it does create quite a bit of a mess. So I like to be expedient, skip over that part and just buy the red fondant. After all of those toadstools are finished, I'm going in and I'm making sure to cover up the base of the toadstools so they look like they're actually growing out of a place, not just sticking out randomly on the cake. This is a very small grass tip that I'm using. I also have a large one, but because this cake is a little bit smaller with the details here, I'm going to go in with the small grass tip. If you are doing really wide areas of grass tipping, I highly suggest you use a large grass tip, but not a small one like that or else you'll be piping 
forever. All right, now we're taking some of this green fondant. Again, still satin ice fondant. I don't use any other brand usually. And we're getting it nice and thin. I put a little bit of cornstarch down whenever I'm working with it in this manner. And I'm going ahead and using a leaf punch cutter. I love punch cutters because they do all of the veining for you and all of the detailing of whatever it is that you're going to be cutting out. And then I can just place it directly on the cake. And I did give that leaf just a little bit of a fold when putting that on. So earlier I talked about dyeing my own fondant. This is a case of I have all of this pink fondant that I don't really need and instead I do need kind of a brownish purplish color for the fox detailing. So I decided to take it and transform it. Now I do use a little bit of fondant here just to create that darkness in the color. Again, Fondust is a great product because you are going to get those really vibrant, saturated colors, but it does create such a mess. So highly recommend that you use gloves and don't mix the color up super close to your cake or anything because I do notice that sometimes the particles do fly up and will end up on your cake, especially if it's like a pure white cake that you're working on and you're adding maybe colored details. Now I am using a giant styrofoam ball here because I did want the fox's head to be a lot larger and I didn't have time to let everything set with the Rice Krispie so I just decided to make it fake because nobody's going to eat this fox anyway. It's for my family so I know for a fact that they're not going to bite into anything that actually has fun directly on it like this. So I decided let's go with styrofoam just to make it easier. I get my styrofoam from a local dollar store. I tend to just buy them whenever I'm at the dollar store. That way I have a nice stock of different sizes as well. I don't add any shortening to this at all. I just kind of stick the fondant on and because I've added that shortening in when I'm kneading it in, it just sticks. But if you're finding it's not sticking, you can add water to it or you can add a little bit of shortening as well to get that fondant to stick to the styrofoam. This little base here is fully just made out of fondant. I don't want to do too much just fully fondant work because if it's too heavy on the cake, it will sink in so I tend to do this only if I know that the figure is small enough and that the cake can withstand it. If you do get problems with fondant figures sinking into itself and kind of bending, then that might mean that you need to add a little bit of Tylose powder just to get things to harden up more quickly. You can also use gum paste, which is basically like the same thing, it's just that you don't have to add that extra step of adding in the Tylose powder. Or you can also just individually dry your fondant pieces and then add everything in together. But be aware that sometimes if you do that, your fondant can crack when you put everything together. So I've come up with a system now where I add just enough shortening, I have just the right amount of all of those things that it actually works where I can just place things on and I don't have to wait for things to dry. I would say that in general, that is the hardest part about creating fondant figures because it's not really necessarily about creating the correct shapes and all of that. That really is about your own artistic abilities and what you desire. It's really about knowing the whole structural integrity of how to create fondant pieces. I added on the fox's arms and I just created those by creating little log like pieces and then I added on of course this brown that I made earlier and yes I realized I made way too much of this brown. I don't actually need that much but I'm sure I'll use it for a different project. Now while your fondant is still nice and malleable that's when you want to add in those details if you want to do any indenting of any sort. So I indented a little bit for the mouth and now I'm just using up some leftover black royal icing that I have. I wouldn't recommend just whipping up black royal icing for this specific project because that's literally just the only spot we're going to use it. You can achieve the same exact look by using fondant or you can also use an edible pen if you prefer. I let that chill in the fridge overnight. I was feeling a little bit tired, but you totally don't have to let that chill before you do this next step. So what I did here was I cut out a fondant too, just using a cutter, placed it directly on the cake, and now I'm kind of creating this birch style look. I'm taking this edible paint that I have in gray, and I'm just kind of gently, very, very sparingly using it. I'm also just kind of taking this other brush that is completely dry and brushing it over top just to kind of blur it a little bit. Then I'm going back in with a little bit more of that black Black royal icing but again you can use something like edible pen instead or edible food paint or you can also just use straight black food coloring to get this as well so I'm just taking again this dry brush and I'm pulling out that colorant just to give it that little kind of effect that it is darker on that portion now this is just a regular clothing steamer you can buy the cake steamers but they're just more expensive and they 
kind of do the same job. So I'm really just doing that to take away all of the excess cornstarch and to give it a really nice saturation of color. And here is our little cute fox cake. This one was for my nephew. My sister really loves cute, cute cakes and she said make whatever you'd like and this is what I decided to go with. So this pricing portion of the video is going to be a little bit different than all of the other pricing I've done before. Since I've done my last video, I can't believe how much pricing of everything has gone up. So because all of the products have really gotten more expensive, at least a dollar each per product, I would say, in terms of how much flour is and all of those things. So I would actually need to raise my prices accordingly. And inflation and the living cost of where I live is getting exponentially more expensive in a very, very quick manner. All of the bakeries in my area have been raising their prices little by little which is totally understandable and I think it's something that is necessary if you're going to survive the baking market. So I know when I was running my baking business a few years ago, I was able to have the luxury of just gradually raising my prices according to my skill. Nothing was really changing that drastically in terms of how much things cost. We are in a very different landscape right now, so I think it is totally fine to make those price adjustments to keep up with the cost of living. Now let's get into the subscriber submission of the video. Love this. It's a buttercream beauty. Really, really springy. Go ahead and check them out on Instagram. Drop them a like and drop them a comment. And if you want to be the next featured subscriber submission of the video, then please follow me at SD Bake Shop on Instagram, where you can either tag me in a photo or send me a photo. Any and all dessert levels are welcome. And by the way, thank you so much, guys, for 10,000 followers on Instagram. Thanks so much for watching, guys. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe so you can be part of the Sweetie Fam. Right now, I'm uploading weekly, so make sure you hit that notification bell so you know when I upload. Also, be sure to comment, request, or ask a question. I love hearing from you guys. Bye!